Hello, welcome to my screencast for Suite. It's a reverse HTTP proxy that allows you to translate a website from one language into another. So on this screencast, I'm going to create one new website proxy to translate Wikipedia from English into French. Uh, then I'm going to show you how to capture the strings and uh, access things like the translation form and use the automatic Google translation function of the system so that you can just translate all the strings uh, automatically with machine translation. So to start with, I'm going to click on create new website. Uh, I'm here on the dashboard uh, right now, uh, which is generally the starting point of the administration console. So I'll hit create new website and that'll take me to the insert new site form. And this is where I'm going to enter all the information about uh, where the source site is and where the destination site will be. So I'm going to give my site a name. I'm just going to call it Wikipedia French. That's because uh, this is the name for my proxy and it's going to be a proxy from English to French. And the URL Notice that I use the en.wikipedia.org. That's because it's the English site. And uh, I can click on source language to select English. That's the language I'm translating from. And the target language, French. And these last two are for where the proxy is going to be published, where I'm going to be able to access the French site from. So I enter the host name, which uh, is the virtual host. Right now I'm just running this on my local machine, but if I had a, my own example.com uh, domain, I, I could put example.com in there. And depending on where uh, my suite server installation was located, I might have the, uh, the base path, including my suite server path, or I can add a little bit to the end of it. So here you can see it's already filling in because I've... Uh, done this before. Um, so I'm going to make this available actually at localhost and then it's going to be in the directory below my suite uh, installation. So this actually uses uh, mod rewrite to do redirection. This directory is not actually here. It's sort of a, a, it's a it's just a proxy. So whatever requests are received at localhost slash suite server 0.2 slash wikipedia dash fr are actually going to be routed to the website URL and then the contents process by suite. So now that I've got all my information here, I'm going to hit save. And you can see that the record was successfully saved. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard, which is my starting point. And you can see in the websites block, my site that I just added is listed here. And uh, it's got the name of the site, it's got a link to view the English version of the site. If I click on this, it'll just open the, uh, the source page. If I click on the French version, it's going to open my URL at my uh, proxy URL. So localhost suite server, that's the address of suite server. And then here's the Wikipedia FR uh, that I made. And then these last bits are just the same as the, uh, the path to the main page on the Wikipedia site. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that it's not actually translated into French yet. That's because Suite doesn't do translation automatically. You have to tell it what you want to have translated so that your uh, translation memory doesn't get all clogged up with unintended uh, translations. So that's actually what we're going to do next. Close this and uh, we'll take a look at the information for the site just so you can see. Right now we've got a, a whole lot of zero. Zero phrases, zero words captured. Um, we haven't translated anything, and so I'm going to close that. The first step uh, towards translation is you have to capture the strings, which is telling Suite what strings do you want to have translated. So I'm going to go click on this action button for my site, and I'm going to select capture strings. And this takes me to a page that has a toolbar. It says string capturing is currently turned off, and I want to turn this on. So what string capturing is, it's kind of like a, uh, a fishing net. When it's turned on, which it is now, um, every page that I load on the site will be sent through Suite. It'll process it, take the strings out, and load them into a database so that I can translate them on the translation form later. So now that I have it turned on, I'm going to refresh this page. 
and that's going to cause it to load this particular page through Suite's processing and it's going to be loaded into the translation memory and ready for me to translate. So I've done that. Now I'm going to click exit. And this is going to take me back to actually the uh, details page for uh, the, uh, the site. But I'm going to go back to the dashboard. This is where I usually like to start. And notice it's got this little alert uh, here. If I hover over this, it says string capturing is currently enabled. That's because I enabled it. You should probably disable this before you make the site live because that step of Suite having to process all the strings, uh, it's quite expensive, uh, processor intensive. So uh, it's not a good idea to have that running on a production site. So this is just a reminder to me to, to turn that off afterwards. Um, if I click on the information now, it, uh, it's a little different than before. It says I've got 145 phrases loaded in with uh, 2,245 words. Those are all the words from the main page. Uh, all of them are untranslated at this point. I haven't translated anything yet. So if I want to translate some words, uh, let's see if I, I can just click on any one of these numbers and it'll take me to the strings tab. There's alternate ways to get there. But the strings tab is where all the strings that are loaded in are listed. So, and it tells you which page the string is on. It tells you uh, the website, number of words, and if there's a current translation, the date it's inserted. Now you can do a search if you just want to find a few of the strings, or you can actually filter if you have more than one website to show you just strings from a particular website. I could also uh, click on the top uh, column here to search by a particular page. Now I've only got one page in there right now, so that's uh, not uh, really that helpful. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you here is how I might want to translate some of these. So suppose I just wanted to translate the first few of these, uh, Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, main page, these are all headings. So I click the box beside each of them. And then up at the top, there's a couple buttons of interest here. One is the translate button, and this allows me, to, uh, this takes me to a translation form to translate these. Uh, there's also the Google Translate button. And that actually just sends them off to Google to translate. So before I do that, because I actually have to do some configuration in order for that to work, I'm going to click on Translate. And this will open up the translation form for just the strings that I've checked. And uh, so you can see I've got a few strings here I can fill in. It shows me on the uh, first line what the English is. Then it gives me a little box where I can put in some French. Well, I'm going to use Google Translate on their actual website to help me out. I've already uh, translated this one beforehand. I'm going to copy and paste that Whoops. into my translation form. And as soon as I tab out of there, you'll see the box turns green with a little check mark. That means uh, it's saved correctly and it's now loaded in my translation memory. So if I go back to the dashboard now, I can click on information and you can see I now have one translated phrase. If I click on that, it'll take me back to the strings tab and it'll just show me that one phrase that I translated, Wikipedia, and it shows what my translation is. And I can always go back and retranslate that. But I can also look at this in the context of the web page now. So uh, before I go on, I'm actually going to turn off capturing strings. So I'm going to go to capture strings again and then I'm going to click this little turn off link. There we go, now it says turn on. And I'll exit out of here again. And I just want to show you what the page looks like with that one string translated. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard again. And I'm going to click on French. And you can see, since I only did the one phrase, and it's the title of the page here. So you can see it show up in the page title, Wikipedia L'Encyclopédie Libre. You can see I don't speak French uh, very well. So that's one string down. Uh, now I'm going to, just to be able to skip a little bit, uh, I want to show you the Google Translate function so that we can translate a whole bunch of strings all in one big batch. Um, this is very helpful if you 
don't have a translator handy, or if you've got a bunch of things that you don't really care that it's specific quality and you just need a, a base translation, you can just pass it to the machine translation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to edit the site information. So I can click on the, the action option for my site again and click on the edit menu. And this will give me very the same form I filled in to create the site, but this time I'm editing the information. I'm going to scroll down to more details. This has some extra options. Um, and I'm interested in the Google API key. Uh, in order to do Google translations, you need to have a Google API key. Uh, there's a link here to find out more about that API. Uh, Google charges money for the translations, but it's actually quite reasonable, uh, the prices. Uh, so uh, let's see, I've got a key written down here. And where is it? There it is. I'm copy that in and save it. And now I'm going to go back to the strings tab. This time, rather than go through the dashboard, I just clicked on the strings tab at the top. Because we have these menu items, we can jump back and forth at any time to the different uh, things. I haven't talked about all of them, and I'm not going to in this video. So we're back at the strings tab, and let's say right now I'm just showing 30 strings per page. Let's say I just want to translate the first 30 strings with Google. I can click the top box here and it, it selects the whole page there. So you can see all the ones that I've got selected. And then I can click Google Translate. And now it gives me this little progress box. And it shows it's sending each string one at a time to Google. And there we go. Translation is complete. So now if we go back to the dashboard and look at our site information again. Wow, look at that. Now we've got 194 phrases, but we've got 30 translated phrases. And uh, only 164 untranslated. So if we look at our French page now, It's got a little bit more French. You can see main page has been turned, or home page has been turned into page d'accueil. Uh, bienvenue sur Wikipedia. And it's got a few things here. This, uh, well, that entire paragraph uh, done. So you can see how you could apply this to just about any website. The, there are actually a lot of features I didn't show here. But uh, we'll get into that in future screencasts. I just wanted to give a brief introduction to how you can use Suite to translate your own website. Uh, for more information, uh, you should check out the uh, Suite homepage, which is at suite.weblight.ca. Uh, that's suite, S-W-E-T-E, dot weblight, that's W-E-B-L-I-T-E, dot C-A. Thank you for watching the screencast.